Hey everyone, and welcome to the NFTX governance call number 24. It is the first Wednesday of the month in January 2022. Uh, each month we do a governance call on the first Wednesday of the month, uh, and this is the first for the year. Um, so to kick things off, we don't have uh, an official agenda this week, uh, nothing specific to talk about. So what we'll do is I'll pass it across to Alex to get started. Uh, and then we might just open up to any the floor for any comments that we might have. So, Alex? Yep. Um, it's been a, a, like a pretty quiet last month, just with uh, Christmas and New Year's and some other European holidays that I've been learning about. Um, so that's um, – but it's nice. I think everyone got refreshed and, like, refueled for the New Year. Uh, looking back over the last year, it's been – Pretty crazy, um, like how far we've come from my initial MVP. Um, and like looking at some of our metrics on the Dune dashboard, a lot of them look really promising. Uh, I think we just passed the, like 150 active vaults per month, uh, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, we got single side staking coming out soon, which is going to be a really big upgrade. Uh, we had our code arena in, like halfway through December for that. And Kiwi is still wrapping up, um, reviewing like all the submissions that came in. And we're thinking that will be out either at the end of this week or early next week. And for people that are wondering, basically the way the single side staking works, um, I was explaining on Twitter last night to some people, like if we use toads as an example, uh, right now you can only stake the sushi liquidity token, which is like toads west, uh, toads weath. Um, and with the single side staking, it'll become possible to stake just the Toads token, um, in addition to staking like the Toads West token, if you want. Uh, and we're thinking that we'll start with a 2080 split. Um, so like, as people know, every time there's a mint or a redeem or a swap on vaults, that there's like a fee that gets collected from the user and that goes to stakers for the vault and currently liquidity stakers. Uh, but with the addition of single side staking, then we'll be splitting those fees um, 20, 80 between the single side and the liquidity. Uh, and that should be pretty cool. I think uh, one of the big issues for a lot of stakers has been impermanent loss. So like, for example, when cool cats came out, uh, I think I like liquidity staked like 10 of them with some ETH when the price was like, you know, 0.1. Uh, and then as the price shot up so much, I ended up getting hit on impermanent loss pretty hard. So this way with the single side staking as well, uh, like my, my plan personally for a lot of vaults is I'll probably just go 50, 50, like half single side, half liquidity. Uh, and that way you still benefit from like the high 80% fees from the liquidity, but on the off chance of the NFTs mooning, you still have a lot of capital in the single side and that gets protected from impermanent loss. Um, so yeah, we're going to start with the 2080 split and see how that goes. And we can tweak that. Um, I think this year we'll probably be doing more number crunching and analytics as far as like what fees work the best um, and like what fee split works well. Uh, we haven't been doing too much of that yet just because we're still adding features and it's kind of like these unknowns that are coming up, like with the single side staking. Uh, but yeah, we're hoping that really increases the TVL uh, because people will just be able to kind of dump all their floor NFTs into NFTX and you won't need any ETH to pair it with. Uh, and for a lot of vaults, like, you know, like the Toads vault, I think it's like 100% APR or something, uh, possibly more right now for the liquidity staking. Um, so the single side staking, that'll be like 20% APR or more, which is pretty solid. Um, like, you know, for not taking any liquidity risk or any impermanent loss risk, um, you just kind of throw your floors in there and you earn this APR. Uh, the one thing people should be aware of is that you, there's no guarantee you're going to get the same NFTs back when you're done staking. That's kind of, um, that's the service you're providing is that you're putting your NFTs in so that other people can swap for them or take them. But you can always be sure that you will get the same number of NFTs back from the vault. 
And um, yeah, we're referring to single side staking as inventory staking because the idea is that it basically increases the inventory of the vault. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. And we're going to be rolling out floor DAO soon as well, or I shouldn't say we, even though the NFTX team is uh, playing a pretty big part in its development. Um, we're trying to keep it like as a separate project of its own so that it can form its own community. Um, and that eventually, you know, we can kind of go back to focusing hundred percent on NFTX. Uh, I don't know if caps or if Edo, if you guys want to talk about Florida a bit, or I think did Edo, did he leave? No, it is still here. Oh, um, oh yeah, I see him. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. you guys want to like just go over the proposal or something um, and just kind of give a summary. That'd be great. Yeah, I have to go over that. So um, everyone here may have seen uh, what's happening with Floor DAO. It's just like an NFT, mostly NFTX core team uh, sort of initiative, uh, which I'll quickly introduce just to try and explain it, but I won't go too deep on the mechanism because uh, it is like a few layers to it. But essentially we are using the Olympus DAO mechanism, uh, bonding mechanism and rebasing mechanism to acquire lots of protocol and liquidity in the form of punk and punk ETH. Um, so in previous instances of Olympus forks and like Olympus themselves, like they acquire this protocol and liquidity and then they have like limited yield strategies with the treasury that, that now owns this stuff. So they can kind of go to Aave and deposit there or they might do something with Convex and they may get sort of 10, 20% APYs. But with Floor DAO, um, we'll be taking punk and punk ETH into the treasury and then becoming market makers through decentralized uh, NFT marketplaces, of which there is only really one at the moment, which is NFTX. So all the Floor DAO tre treasury will be market going to market making on NFTX. Um, and uh, as part of the bootstrapping mechanism, so uh, we're going to keep this as like, we want the launch to be as like distributed um, and as kind of like modest for the team and, and fair for the community. Um, we're going to be going through a copper launch, which if anyone's familiar with like uh, Balancer LVP stuff, it's basically a Dutch auction, uh, which runs through like Balancer's AMM and people can buy and sell into the Dutch auction uh, as the price kind of goes down over time. Um, but to bootstrap that pool, we need uh, ETH to pair with the floor liquidity. And rather than going through a private sale or a seed round and doing like uh, private token allocations, uh, we thought, and this was Ato kind of uh, had the loan idea and taking on debt instead of taking on uh, equity or giving out equity. Um, we take on a, a loan from NFTX and, and use that to bootstrap this uh, copper launch LVP. So the proposal is essentially seeking 500 ETH loan from NFTX DAO um which will be repaid in like probably no longer than two weeks time so the, this uh with lvps you don't lose the eth that you put in that eth will like be there so there's limited risk uh, that will be like fully like allow the loan to be fully repaid straight away afterwards um and it will just allow floor out to kick off its treasury and start the like the bonding method allows to start the the rebasing mechanism using the the uh the ETH raised from the LVP. Um, and yeah, the as a, as a return for NFTX, like obviously there's a huge alignment here because the Claude out treasury will be going straight into NFTX, uh, but also there's like a token allocation as well for NFTX DAO um, that will be coming from Claude out as well. Uh, so that proposal is now live on Snapshot as well. Um, and like the overview can be seen on, on forum.nftx.org. Sweet. Uh, thanks, dude. Yeah, um, for those of you that don't know much about Olympus DAO, uh, it's it's pretty cool. And um, basically the innovation is like this bonding mechanism. Um, so the treasury keeps growing over time. Um, and there was quite a few people on Twitter saying how it would be great to have something like Olympus DAO, but for NFTs and like specifically NFT floors. So yeah, it's a, it's a perfect fit for NFTX. Um, in terms of increasing our TVL and protocol usage and hopefully just, you know, getting some vaults much larger. Um, and we'll be starting with Punk. And then I think like the Florida community 
will be voting on which NFTs to do after. So like perhaps like Basty or Macy or Cool Cats or Doodles or something. Uh, so yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, just just seeing Josh's questions coming in. Um, oh. First of, I guess going back up. Actually, let's start with the floor now question first. So um, yeah. Punks OTC, um, just anyone, so the mechanism will probably work like this. Uh, we don't expect people to be minting punk to bond into FloorDAO. Um, NFT holders will probably just uh, be holding on to the NFTs and instead we'll have like DeFi native users will go to Sushi and buy punk from Sushi and then bond that into FloorDAO. What the impact of that will be is that the price of punk starts moving up. Um, it goes way higher than the Lava Labs floor. And then people who hold floral CryptoPunks will probably mint and sell through NFTX. Um, so someone like Punks OTC, it's, it's basically just an arbitrage. There'll be like a fair chunk of arbitrage going on between um, the sushi pool and like the like secondary marketplaces like Love Labs. Um, so yeah, expect that to be a fair chunk of activity. And then on the fault tokens on centralized exchanges, that's definitely something we want to do. Um, liquidity at the moment is thin, even like punks, I think it's like 20 million. Uh, it's not huge. Um, but you know, with this, with the launch of single side staking, with the launch of Ford out, um, it's very possible that we build deep enough liquidity where it can be uh, legitimately like spread across various centralized exchanges and um, other like AMMs like Uniswap P3 and, and wherever else. I think some people have asked um, about getting it on Binance. Um, there were some uh, like VCs that were curious about that, um, but I think Chop had some trouble <laughs> working with their biz dev team. I think we've got Trail of Bits coming soon. That will help a lot, I think. Um, so with this, with an audit like that, uh, it should be much easier conversation, especially when the liquidity grows. But, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, if we if we end up with not much else to talk about, um, we could always go over the fees. Um, right now, the punk vault fees are pretty low. Um, and we lowered them just to try to increase um, or reduce the slippage so that people can kind of arb it easier. Uh, but I think the APR has gone down as a result. But um, maybe today is not the best time to get into that. Would be good to get a temperature check or like, I think just to hear what people's thoughts are on the punk fees. Um, I think they need to go up. I was just saying this before the yeah. Punk was it? Yeah. yeah, what is it right now? Um, zero, zero to mint. mint. Yeah, so that one, zero, one, one, three, one, three. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so... What, like one of the reasons we increased fees for most vaults was just because um, for a lot of vaults, the slippage, like um, the liquidity slippage was higher than the fees itself. Um, so, you know, some people would think in that situation, it's good to lower fees so that overall it's still cheaper. But um, actually it makes sense to increase the fees because that's the only way you can actually get attract more liquidity is if there's higher fees. Um, and then as a result, if you get more liquidity, then the slippage goes down and the users have better cost overall and the stakers are earning more, more money. So everyone wins. Uh, but Punk is the one vault which um, NFTX DAO um, subsidizes quite heavily. So there isn't really a need um, to attract more liquidity for it. So I guess instead of increasing the vault fees, we actually decreased them. Um, but yeah, I think it needs to go up. 0% um, mint is, is pretty low. Do we know what the APR is for the vault right now? 60% thereabouts. Oh, 40, uh, yeah. 45, 45. Yeah, it'd probably be nice to just increase, bump the fees like a percent each. Um, after single side staking, like I was saying, I think we'll get more into number crunching and actually trying to optimize the fees for vaults. Um, we would like to keep it like a default as much as possible. 
like globally, just so that we don't end up micromanaging fees for all these different vaults. It's, you know, it's nice if there's some sort of rule set for which vaults have higher fees, which vaults have lower fees, uh, depending on the usage. Uh, another thing is that it's unfortunate with sushi swap that you can only get like 0.3% uh, trading fees because some vaults like punk, they see as much or more activity um, in the fungible trading, uh, like people using it like as an index token, as opposed to people actually using the vault to buy and sell. Um, so that's another thing we're going to be looking into early this year is possibility of, you know, getting on Uniswap V3 or perhaps, you know, forking um, sushi swap so that we can increase the fees ourselves. Uh, but yeah, if anyone has thoughts on that, feel free to speak up or throw it in the chat. Punk APR is 45% right now. Guess we can wait and see. It, it's good to have the it's good to have the low fees for the Floridao launch, um, just because it's less friction for people arbing. Uh, but after after the Florida launch, we probably want to change that. There's not really our being a possibility during the launch. Oh, there isn't. Oh, I like guess not during the launch. I, I mean, like um, just the bonding, like the early yeah. weeks. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. That'll be ongoing. I mean, there is an implied fee because when you mint, you have to redeem it at some point, right? So there's like an implied fee there. Um, in the is the minimum yeah. percent. True. So it's, it's not like feeless in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, just the fees paid later. I see Josh has mentioned that OpenSea is raising at 13 billion. It's crazy. Oh, I yeah. didn't even know that. It's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Right. Um, Finally yeah, buying new servers. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I think that there's going to be um, a lot of fragmentation of nft marketplaces starting this year uh, like right now OpenSea is basically the incumbent and they have arguably a monopoly on the trading space but we're already seeing um we're already seeing sites like nftrade.com um, and other marketplaces pop up with zero trading fees so um yeah i think we'll see more fragmentation and more um more use of aggregators like Genie and Gem, um, which is really good for us because as more people use aggregators, then the NFTX inventory will just be like front and center, um, especially since we have so many floor items. Um, like for the punks, like 90% of the cheapest punks are from NFTX. So that's great. <laughs> I I heard rumors that Twitter was looking into buying OpenSea, oh, but I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe now that Jack's gone. Yeah, now Jack's gone, they can start doing stuff with ETH, right? My great OpenSea. And I think we have. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say I think we have new docs coming up pretty soon. Um, Javery's been working on um, like NFTX Academy site, uh, which. I think you're, we're getting pretty close to being able to publish. Yeah, it's pretty close. There's uh, a few more eyes need to go across and I've got to, there's one other section um, that we need to build out uh, for us to go live. Let's grab that. But yeah, we're, uh, it'll be, instead of being broken down by the protocol or the product itself, like we have in the docs, it's going to be broken into uh, use cases. So there's a section for stakers, there's a section for shoppers, there's a section for NFT projects, there's a section for integrators, um, and it just a lot more high level information than what you might find in the docs and practical stuff. It's like more of a tutorial. Yeah. Um, we should probably also, I, I don't know if it's something you've already done, Jabri, but um, give teams some recommendations for um, how they can distribute staking rewards to um, NFT vault token, NFTX vault token holders. I was, I was talking to a buddy last night um, who was saying like he's into this project uh, Feudals and they have all these staking rewards and it's basically like this play to earn game. 
and that they were thinking of setting up an NFTX vault. But again, you know, the concern is that anyone providing inventory for the NFTX vault would then be missing out on the game staking rewards. Um, I know we've gone over this before. It's, it's a difficult problem to solve. Um, and I think the best way is if like the dev teams behind the NFTs themselves uh, incorporate the vault tokens into their staking model. Yeah, but, Pen, yeah, um, yeah. I reached out to uh, a, a new project recently about um, they were they were looking at doing a liquidity pool and they hadn't had uh, NFTX on their list. So I mentioned that Per had gone out with like two liquidity pools to see how it went and then moved it all onto uh, double down on NFTX after a while and said to go to to the Penelope's team and talk to them. When I reached out to Carl and Nate to let him know that they might be in touch, he asked. Uh, if anyone had done this specific thing, because they're looking at doing a staked token for people who hold the NFTs. And there's a really good conversation between you, Kiwi, and oh, I can't remember the other guy's name uh, in the Builders channel around how to use oh, the staking yeah. contracts um, to allow people to stake on NFTX and still earn tokens um, throughout. But like you said, it's it's really down to the projects to really integrate it into what they're building and into their contracts. Yeah. Uh, I think that was the Rue vault, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think yeah. the Rue vault exists at the moment, um, but they, they're they're going through the yeah. development stuff uh, for it. Or if it is, they no, haven't it, quite it, got it, the token. Um, okay. But yeah, they're, they're building out their own um, staking interface that would basically let people stake on the NFTX vault from their own website. Um which is it's pretty cool. It's great to see teams actually integrating us directly. Uh, for teams that don't, I still think there are ways that we can try and tackle the problem. Um, basically, the best way is you know for the vault to then earn um, like the play to earn staking fees itself. Um, the problem is that it then becomes a challenge of how to distribute uh, the tokens in, like these these stake tokens um, or stake rewards from the vault then back to the actual vault holders. Um, and yeah, it's, it's on our to-do list. It's um, it's probably not like super high priority at the moment. Um, and in terms of other stuff that we're going to be working on over the next couple months, uh, we're working on like a pretty awesome homepage um, that JB has been putting together. It looks really dope. Uh, like much more like dashboard style. And uh, and so, yeah, we're going to be updating the homepage um, and just like more call to actions. Um, and then we also want to get into like basically like profile or like wallet views so that you can view all the NFTs um, in your wallet and, you know, or at least all the ones that you can interact with on NFTX. Um, and then also view other people's wallets on NFTX uh, we were talking about yesterday, like, you know, we've been thinking about like having like profile pictures and banners and stuff like that. But we think we'll probably just go with uh, like just use ENS across the board. So people's username will be their ENS um, domain and people's avatar or profile picture will be their ENS profile picture because I'm pretty sure you can set that now using ENS. Um, and that keeps us from having to build a back end out, um, at least for now. And for banners, we're thinking we'll go with something like what Zapper does and basically just randomly show some of your NFTs um, like in a square pattern for the banner. But yeah, um, yeah, just making the site like more usable and kind of um, feature parity with certain aspects of OpenSea. And long term, we're still like our roadmap is still very open-ended uh, just because we don't want to commit to anything as the space is still changing so much. So, um, sorry, just reading. Oh yeah. Um, if anyone has ideas on what sort of stuff you'd like to see uh, for like your portfolio view, we'd love to hear it. Um, but yeah, we're still thinking like if we run out of stuff to do with vaults in the near future, that the obvious next move is building out like a full featured marketplace um, like decentralized open sea. Um, but for now we're still focused on vaults and, you know, getting the TVL up. L2. Yeah. We need to get on L2s as well. Um, I think polygon is, um, 
Yeah, yeah. Paul Golan and Arbitrum. Arbitrum yeah, is definitely. crazy big. Becoming crazy uh, big. Um, one feature request I'm seeing if, uh, a few people ask, and it's something we talked about internally, and be good to get thoughts, is um, on the holdings within the vaults, being able to zap and use uh, different assets while keeping them in the vault. So you don't ever take, you don't have to redeem them and then mint them back in, um, but you actually use the asset the vault uses the asset on your behalf and then and then rewards you with whatever it might be so if it's like harvesting like i think is it rare bunnies where they're getting carrots at the moment if it's like harvesting carrots it's like you can do that on any of the assets within the vault and it comes straight out to you and without having to mint and redeem or sorry redeem and mint uh, the gas will be really low um so it could be like a good fee generation tool for lps because it just also like automates their use. So if, if you were holding those assets yourself, you would have to go and harvest all that stuff and like sell them. So r rather than doing that, you could just single sided stake and then you would just take some fees while other people did that work for you and you'd be paid in, in the vault token. Um, that kind of idea I think is something worth exploring uh, without keyword, yeah. it's hard to have the like technical. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah. I agree. Uh, part of the, like another, just like thing we'd have to decide on is with these rewards like how it gets distributed um it's especially it's especially tough for stuff like airdrops um like should the airdrop get distributed um based on who's holding the vault token at the time of the airdrop or should it get distributed based on who's holding the vault token at the time of distribution um and whether it should go to just the vault token holders or whether it should go to the stakers or whether it should go to both um so i was yeah, wondering if you had just like a fee paid like let's just say it's punk right and and the fee would be paid in punk it, it wouldn't it wouldn't matter what you did with them um and the, that fee would just be a flat fee for using each asset so each asset would have a fee tied to it and that would then go to the stakers so, oh. so you never had to worry about like exactly how much value they were extracting uh you just mm -hmm. did a flat it's like it'd just be another fee in the system. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if but we I know you've got ideas. airdrops. Yeah, yeah maybe. no, I, for airdrops, are, like we could, I think that's a good solution as long as there's like a bid mechanism. Because, um, like, you know, let's say like with the MeBits airdrop, um, somebody wants to use all the punks to claim all the potential MeBits. Um, it's nice if people can actually bid up that fee so that you don't, so that the people, um, the vault token holders get like a maximum amount of what that's actually worth. Yeah, that'd be cool. If we're talking about the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, revest. Um, I don't know what revest is actually. Is that a, is that a protocol dismal? Okay, sorry, I've got a link something for you here. One second. Oh, cool. Um, Fubar works on it. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Revest of finance. See Fubar at the bottom there. Yeah, um, I should look into this after the meeting. Uh, you can you can speak, Diz, but can you un unmute yourself? Talking to um, Dismal? Hello. Yeah. Hey, Dismal. Um, huh. Yeah, I'd like to read up more on this. Yeah, it's basically a time lock. You could set multiple kinds of locks. You could do a you know actual time, like you make it four years in the future to unlock. Or it could be a total value lock of say, hey, we will not let these airdrop items come out of this vault until you know, a certain amount of punk or whatever it is is raised. Or it could be a combination of time and amount of money or what have you. Basically, whatever parameters you want to set up, you essentially can. And then pieces of what's locked in the vault can become uh, available over time. Uh, I, honestly, I think, guys, for your... 65,000 vesting NFTX, this would be great for you to be able to pull out in real time any amount that you would be owed 
as you go throughout the year, as opposed to waiting for whatever schedule to hit and then you're entitled to it at that date, this would allow you to potentially access that in real time. Huh. Yeah, that's cool. Just looking now. Yeah, definitely going to look into this more. Thanks. I, I've been thinking about this on the HD Punk side because you know we, we've got the burn mechanism with the NFTX uh, tokens right now, and I'm, I'm contemplating bringing up the Fubar, saying, "Hey, instead of sending those to the dead wallet, why not put a super long time lock and then an uh, outrageous price that would allow the tokens to become accessed if somebody then wanted to be able to grab them and go at the vault, as opposed to yeah. burning." Yeah, it's cool. Um, I love how HD Punks is doing the burning right now, but um, yeah, it's always cool to like even upgrade the mechanism more. Happy to cool. try to put you in touch with them. Uh, yeah. We've got one of their reps in our Discord as one of our uh, members. Nice. Yeah. Um, definitely happy to chat about this more. I think we uh, lost, lost him on the call, but Josh, I, I wanted to say a quick thanks to him for um over christmas for putting up the other uh, proposal for buying the dj and i don't think it ended up being the right thing for nftx necessarily to do but for uh for actually putting it up and going through the uh, effort of getting in touch with him and finding out answers for the questions that we all proposed just a, a thanks for for being a good community member yeah no, josh is great uh and uh dj and jade is a cool site too i I was looking at it the other day on how most base E holders have like less than five ETH or less than one ETH in their wallet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, total apes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, go for it, Dismal. Cool. Um, I, I left a comment in the NFTX channel, and it, it seems like this could potentially be feasibly possible if everybody were to pick the same L2. And I know you guys have decisions to make on that end. Uh, these guys are, you know, working to figure out what direction they want to go. But, you know, they're, they're really trying to get the tokenomics on their project right. And I, I really do believe that that includes, you know, having an NFTX vault. Um, and, you know, that they're looking to you know return value to the community one way to potentially go about that is to get everything off open open c and have the community support the vault and you know return that two and a half percent that open c charges and with the changes that you guys are getting ready to make my understanding is is that the, instead of the normal bonding curve of you know the price is the price based on how it goes you got the ability to set custom prices if you will there's going to be a lot of NFT wearables, skins, um, all sorts of stuff that go along with, with the gaming aspect here. I, I think it'd be a great way for you know the community to take advantage of the, the sales that go through by using the vault. But I, I know everybody would have to be on the same L2. I didn't know if you guys had any further information on you know what direction you guys are going so I could try to nicely nudge them. I brought up Palm and, you know, they're not necessarily a huge fan of that. I know, I'm not sure you guys are all the way done with that. Yeah. I know Polygon was mentioned earlier. Uh, I, I guess my question is, is, is this something that would be of interest to NFTX? And if so, how can I, as an interested third party, help try to get people talking together so smart people can do smart things? Yeah, um, just out of curiosity, is NFT 2040, is that related to NFT 20 or is that... Is it I thing? don't believe so. No, it's an okay. NFT battle royale. So it's like uh, Smash Brothers meets uh, Halo and Call of Duty. <laughs> All my favorite games. Yeah, so it's, it's basically a CSGO for NFT. And it's going to be the first blockchain based NFT driven uh, battle royale 3D game that comes out. Uh, and they haven't decided yet which L2 they're going to be focusing on? Not necessarily. I mean, they, they, I'm sure that they have, but they've not necessarily, you know, publicly stated. I, I keep, mm -hmm. you know, jabbing team members that I know a little bit more on a personal level to see if they can give some more. But I, I really think that, you know, they're, they're trying to read where the market is going so they can make the best possible decision. 
And in my mind, if that ultimately ends up in an NFTX vault, it'd be nice for them to talk to you guys before they do anything, you know, that makes that harder to have happen in the long run. Yeah, totally. Um, you, you mentioned Palm and like we were meaning to get launched on Palm like months back. Um, and there were just some hangups basically with their block explorers, um, not supporting yeah, proxies. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're still hoping to get launched on Palm eventually, but I think we'll be focusing on, like Chop said, Polygon and Arbitrum uh, first. Um, the nice thing about, you know, being totally on chain is that it's pretty easy to deploy onto um, other L2s as long as they support the EVM. Um, so, yeah, I think Polygon and Arbitrum are the ones that are gaining the most speed. Uh, but I, then there's also like Immutable X um, and like Optimism and stuff. Um, it's, it's not my specialty that I'm knowing about L2s, but uh, I think we're just going to try and get deployed on as many as possible because, yeah, right now it's difficult to know like which L2s the market will converge on or whether they'll you know, be pretty um, fragmented and, you know, lots of different projects on different L2s. Um, so, yeah, hopefully like three months from now, um, we're live on multiple L2s uh, and then we can start, you know, seeing what um, what the usage is for that. And yeah, thanks for that, Dismal. Uh, anything else? I got a quick little uh, blurb. If uh, nothing, no one else said anything. Go for it. So, uh, what's up, everybody? My name's Toes. I've been uh, lurking for a while, but I uh, recently been getting more involved with the project on the uh, BD side of things. So, essentially, you know, my meta goal. Uh, getting involved in NFTX is to build connections between DeFi and NFTs. So, you know, for me, that's kind of one of the most interesting uh, pieces of the puzzle where, you know, the timing's really good with FloorDAO starting to deepen liquidity, establish reliable price floors, and all of the existing NFTX infrastructure being, you know, where it needs to be. I think the timing's really cool to start to like you know, unlock NFTs to be composed into uh, DeFi protocols. So um, essentially, you know, I've uh, I worked in DeFi from 2017 to 2021. Um, so I've having some conversations with different protocols and different folks and the feedback's been really good. So, um, you know, I'll uh, be more involved in the coming weeks and months. Um, you know, expect some updates, uh, some, you know, whatever learnings I have, I'll definitely share with everybody. And, you know, other than that, uh, feel free to hit me up on Discord or whatever, at Toes, if you want to have a chat, have any ideas, grab a coffee, whatever. So, uh, so yeah, uh, looking forward to, to, to getting more involved and uh, excited for big things. Yeah, thanks, Toes. Uh, cool to hear your voice finally. Um, and yeah, it's, it's great that, you know, we're getting more into the BD side of things uh, because, you know, over the last year, that's kind of been a weakness. We've just been focusing on product. Uh, and I think like you already had some talks with like MakerDAO um, and some other big projects. So, um, yeah, once we have our trail of bits audit done, hopefully we can really start to branch out and get integrated into some pretty big protocols. Um, and have our vault tokens like basically use this collateral, which would be yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the, the feedback's been really, really good so far. It's like something all these like DeFi protocols really want. And I think like finally the infrastructure is in place. So, uh, so definitely stoked for next steps. Oh yeah. Cool. 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 People are still arriving, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, yeah, if no one else has anything they want to add, I'll probably wrap up here. Sounds good. Cool. Well, we're all excited for 2022. Uh, the last year was quite chaotic. Uh, you know, even just getting a DAO started is, is really tough. 
I think there's a lot of luck involved with getting the right people um, early on. So, you know, a good culture can form and that culture can kind of sustain itself as the project keeps growing. Um, and I just feel like I got so lucky with so many of the people that joined in early um, and the community. And yeah, like when I started the project, it was all about like index funds and didn't really have much to do with liquidity or yield. Uh, so yeah, we've just, in my opinion, come so far and we're just like really well positioned to just ship, ship, ship um, and keep building and expanding this year. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a learning experience over the last year and uh, definitely going to keep learning from our mistakes, uh, but making a lot of progress. It's uh, pretty exciting. All right, cool. Should we call it airdrop? Yes, sir. I'll uh, oh, cool. stop the recording. Cool. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Yeah. Bye, guys. Yeah, see you guys. Yeah. See you, mate.